Well, good morning, everybody. Theo the Juggernaut with you Monday morning. What a wonderful weekend. Jets finished off the preseason. Bombers end up going to Edmonton and having a thriller amongst uh, some unincidents, unfortunate incidences after the game. We won't talk about that outside Commonwealth. But now we're looking at Monday, the beginning of a new month, October. Here it comes. Let's see who made the list. All right. Let's go to the Winnipeg Jets. Basically, they played 500 hockey during the preseason. They won two, they lost two, and they lost two via shootout. I mean, not a bad deal, not a great deal, but the bottom line is things definitely got worked out. Who made my list? Patrick Laine made my list. Five goals in six games. This guy can't wait for the regular season to start. This guy has been on the money since the puck first dropped in the first preseason game. That shot looks unreal. He's put on a little bit of LBs so he can take a little bit more of a punishment. This guy is ready to fire and fire at will. Who else made my list? In a good way, but not in a good way. Andrew Kropp. This guy goes down in the first period, blocks a Mark Giordano shot right in the kneecap. The knee blows up like a balloon. Unfortunately, not able to finish the rest of the game in Calgary. He's being uh, redone and relooked at this week while they practice Monday and Tuesday before Wednesday's tilt against the Toronto Maple Leafs at home. Regular season home opener Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. As for that, who else makes my list? Well, Steve Mason makes my list because he hasn't really shone a lot and he hasn't really gone really, really bad. I mean, here's a guy that's been pretty accurate, about two, two and a half, three goals a game. Uh, usually making about 30 to 32 saves a game. He's doing very well. He's building a relationship well with his goaltending coach, Wade Flaherty, as well as Connor Hellebuck, his net, second net minder. So I think they're going to work on some good streams. The bottom line is all I need you guys to do is to stop the puck. So I'm calling you out, both of you, Hellebuck and Mason. Make sure you guys stop the puck. Let's get more goals. Let in less. Let's get some W's. Because quite frankly, let's be honest, this fan base, this team is looking for more than just a good effort in 82 games. They want to see something after 82. Sportsnet's already calling them the sixth best team in uh, the Central out of seven, or out of the North, out of the, uh, yeah, the Central out of seven. Only the Avalanche sit behind us. Whether or not we want to take that as ammo and put that on the dartboard, put that on the whiteboard, if you will, in the dressing room, let's go do that because we need some sort of emphasis and moji and mojo to get this team rolling now and rolling quick. I mean, last time I checked, every game is either a win, a loss, or a shootout win or loss. So if you can get more of those while these teams are still trying to figure out their own lives, the bottom line is the Jets have a better chance to win these games. So let's get doing this. The roster-wise doesn't have to be finalized till Thursday or so till Tuesday at 4 p.m. Get a couple days ahead of myself here. Tuesday, 4 p.m. Final roster deadline. Uh, we're looking at some injuries. Bottom line, the defense is pretty squared up. Sherratt's going to be seven. Pullman will go down to the Moose most likely. He'll be number eight. But I think Pullman will be getting more ice time should one of those top six get injured. Power play was fantastic. The Stars need to pick up their game. They need to not rely just on. You know, Patrick Line and what he does. Shifley's got to start putting the puck in. Uh, Wheeler needs to start doing his best. Less uh, talking on the social aspect, more talking on the ice. We'll leave it at that. As for our uh, Jets, like I said, they're taking on Matthews and the Leafs on Wednesday. Who else made my list? Well, Saturday night we saw the Edmonton Eskimos put a little bit of a thrill at the end of the fourth quarter, and that was quickly capped off by one Chris Randall. Five tackles, one interception, but the key here, that INT was a pick six. Let uh, Justin Medlock off the hook. Justin Medlock, you're also on my list. You can go buy Chris Randall a wonderful steak dinner and take his mom out for dinner too because I tell you, without him and you going 0 for 3, this, team, this game was a lot closer, and not to mention missing a point after, this game was a lot closer than what it should have been. You usually lights out. This defense bailed you out. Uh, blanking the Eskimos in the first half and then that pick six with two and a half left by Chris Randall great way to end the game 28-19 final score our boy Matt Nichols 24 for 32 so he's throwing out a 75 two touchdowns and once again no interceptions offense is still rolling through Andrew Harris 54 yards on the ground 81 in reception he's still on pace to be the first ever 1,000 rusher 1,000 receiver Kudos to him. He's got five games to go. Let's see if he can get it done. Bombers D, fantastic work. Can't really say much more than that. Mo Leggett went out in the first half. He didn't return to the game as well. So 
Hopefully he's got a little bit, a couple days to rest here before they take on Hamilton on Friday. Uh, they are 10 and three right now, five and two on the road, five and one at home. Uh, this team is looking to do great things. They've won eight of the last nine. Uh, you know, go support your Bombers. I mean, the bottom line is these guys are playing great ball. They're sitting second in the entire CFL. They're keeping pace with the Stampeders. They're looking for that home uh, playoff game at IG Field. Let's give them what they need Friday night. We'll talk about the bumps, the bruises, and the final roster changes before Friday. Feel the juggernaut saying we're going to keep with the list. I like the list off the cuff here. Have a great Monday. Stay dry.